My name is Sarah Sabri. I'm an analog astronaut and I'm the founder and executive director of Deep Space Initiative. An analog astronaut is someone who simulates Moon and Mars missions on Earth to, pre to prepare for, long, for future long duration space missions. And we do that by preparing ourselves both physiologically and psychologically by being in isolation on habitat on Earth. So there are different analog habitats around the world. So there is one in Poland, there is one in Hawaii, there is going to be one in uh, South Korea, I believe. And then we will have one in Africa very soon. So the one that I went to was Lunaris, it was in Poland and it was built on an old airport, uh, in an old nuclear bunker actually, and we had no access to sunlight, so it was just completely enclosed. And that was bec that's because on the moon in the future, we were probably going to build the habitat uh, underground just to protect ourselves from radiation and rays and everything. And you're in complete isolation from the world with very little access to communication with the outside world. And um, we were eating only freeze-dried food. And this is the same type of food that astronauts eat on the ISS. So we had um, EVAs, which are spacewalks. And you put on the spacesuit, you do a different types of experiments on the surface of the moon. Uh, you collect a few samples, you run different medical scenarios where, you know, in case something bad happens, in case your spacesuit, you know, rips in, on, the surface of the, on the surface of the moon, what do you do? Like So Deep Space Initiative is a non-profit company based in the U.S., but we are open to all nationalities. And our mission is to make space more accessible and to provide more opportunity in the field, both educational lectures, short courses, podcasts, and as, and as well as working in teams to conduct the research that you want to work on with us while having guidance from an expert in the field. So within Deep Space Initiative, we have three topics. We have astronaut health and performance. So this one study is space medicine, the physiological effects of being in space, and then we have space architecture, which is more space engineering, and that one encompasses environmental control and life support systems, so everything that keeps astronauts alive, both on space stations and planetary habitats. And then third, we have space transportation systems, and this one deals more with the spacecraft, you know, with the engineering side of the spacecraft. DSI's mission is to really break the borders, to really try to erase as much as possible those lines drawn on the map. And these lines on the map have created great disparities in opportunity and accessibility. We want to combat that by providing these opportunities that are just open for all, no matter the location, the resources, everything. So we want to really um, unify the world in you know, the space field, through the space field. We are working on building the first analog research station in Africa, which is going to be based in Egypt, which is very, very exciting. And it's really important for the progress of the field in Egypt. There's a few different projects that I'm working on with the Egyptian Space Agency, and they're more targeted for Egypt and Africa. And one of them is the Space Ambassador Program. And this one is aimed to create more exposure and outreach in the field of space in Egypt. We really want space to be part of the conversation in Egypt and for it to be kind of something normal to talk about. Because in Egypt, when growing up, we're not really exposed to space. We're not exposed to, you know, astronauts or rocket launches or anything like that. But we want to change that because there's so much potential in the, in the region. So many things could be done here because of, you know, where we're located, um, you know, the resources that we have, time for, you know, Egypt and um, Africa and the Middle East to be on the map in the space field to have a big impact you know, in the field and in the progress of making um, deep space missions possible and long duration uh, space missions possible and just the exploration of space in general. The Earth is our home and it's the only one that we have and that's the one that we know and that's the one that we have been, you know, that's the one that we are, have adapted to and that's the one we evolved to be able to thrive in. And so we need to be careful, we need to take care of it. And looking at the world from, you know, from space, you get this overview effect. The technologies that have been developed for space have historically always been used for Earth. Space is not only there to, for exploration, space is there to help our life on Earth. And it's really not uh, two separate things. I think space is a tool to allow us to unify the world and for us to have this, um, 
the sense that we are all the same and we're all, you know, working together on this world just because it's our home and not, you know, like separating them. If I want to go to space one day, yes, of course. Um, it's, it's, it's a really, it's a dream of mine, of course. And it's, and I would like to go to Mars and I would like to be, you know, part of the team that starts to build the, 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 the settlement there. And it's not an easy feat when and if the day ever comes. And I'm honestly willing to, to sacrifice everything to make that happen and to help out humanity to as much as I can.